Hi hey guys, Ken Smith, Ken Smith Fishing. So before we jump into this week's video, a uh, couple things. Number one, I apologize. I'm way behind on emails and comments on my videos and Facebook stuff. Uh, we've had COVID, so uh, the boys got sick beginning of last week. Sarah got sick a couple days later, and then it got me. Uh, everybody's on the mend. I will tell you that Havlaxoid or whatever they call that they give you is the worst tasting stuff in the world, but everybody's on the mend. I still tested positive today. I'm recording this on Sunday, so hopefully by tomorrow. Sarah tested negative today, so hopefully we're all going to be better here and we can get back to regular life early next week. You can tell up so I don't have all my voice back. Uh, and second thing I want to mention is we lost a lost a great fisherman here in Texas in the last uh, in the last week. Uh, yeah, about about ten days ago now. Uh, Calvin Vestal passed away, and uh, as a young man, Cal Calvin was eighty. As a young man, I looked up to Calvin. Uh, probably one of the best spinnerbait fishermen that I've ever known. Certainly, uh, actually, Terry Hawkins, the guy you guys see me fish bass champs with, my partner. He and Calvin were partners for several years, and he talks about some of the stuff that Calvin taught him and how he doesn't do some of the stuff he probably should do. Excuse me. Uh, that Calvin taught him to make him a better spinnerbait fisherman. I'll tell you two really quick funny stories about Calvin. First one is the biggest stringer I've ever weighed was on Richmond Chambers Lake. It was in the mid-30s. And uh, it was by then, back then, by far, probably by more than 10 pounds, the biggest stringer I'd ever weighed. And I finished second. Calvin beat me. Uh, he had 35, 70 something, if I remember right. Uh, and the other one is, uh, I pulled up on him at Rayburn. And, and generally speaking, if Calvin was on the water, Calvin was throwing a spinnerbait, usually a single blade spinnerbait. And I pulled up on him, and I'll never forget where it was. It was in mud. And I was going down a grass line, and they were just munching on a big, on, on a half ounce trout. And he's like, ah, matter, matter of fact, I, let me let me correct myself. It was a three quarter ounce trout because the grass was pretty deep. Oh, I can't get him to bite that rattle trout. He's throwing that spinnerbait, throwing that spinnerbait. Well, he'd seen me catch a three pounder right before I got to him. I fished by him, and I fished by him. I caught a six pounder. <clears throat> the next day. I pull back in there, making that same pass back down through there, and I come up on Calvin, and he's throwing three quarter ounce rattle trap. And he says, "You know where you caught that three pounder?" He goes, "I just caught a ten pounder right there." And he caught a nine something right there on a rattle trap. So, you're welcome, Calvin Bestel. Calvin showed me how to catch those deep fish at Richmond Chambers uh, when they were spawning in the tops of the trees. And I got to tell you, that was some of the most fun fishing I've ever experienced. And I'm hoping when this new lake fills up in East Texas, we get to do some of that. But I just wanted to say, uh, I wish I hadn't lost track of Calvin like I have many, many friends over the last couple of years, uh, especially through COVID. But uh, if you got a buddy like that and you hadn't talked to him in a while, pick up the phone call. So anyway, I'm losing my voice as much from COVID as emotional, but it's a nasty combination. So uh, we're going to review now a Triton. Uh, I'm going to get this model number right. Well, I put it right there at the bottom of the page. So that's the Triton we're going to look at. It's a 2014 model. And uh, let's check it out, and I'll come back at the end and talk a little bit more about uh, what I saw in this boat. and girls say hello Tom hey you guys you're supposed to say hello Tom but he didn't get that so Slowly so we are on uh, Sam Rayburn today and we are in Tom's now this is something this is something I've not done before right I've always looked at new boats or boats you know a couple years old that are in production but my battery's about to die so let me finish that thought with a new battery hold on guys sorry about that so anyway so uh, you know, if I'm looking at a metal boat, I don't necessarily want a brand new boat. So I was really curious to look at a boat that had some hours on it. And Tom's boat is a Triton, which again is not made anymore. I believe they were made in the same factory as Ranger metal boats. Is that correct, Tom? 
And we, so obviously we don't know for sure, but so this is a smaller boat, 17.6. He's got a 75 horse, four stroke Mercury on the back of it. Uh, it's about a 40, 42 mile an hour boat. We come across the big lake on it there a minute ago. And it's to me, what I would feel is a traditional small bass crappie style boat. I'll, I'll tell you right now, if you're fishing Rayburn and Toledo and you're tournament fishing and you have gotta go the length of the lake, you're gonna need a bigger boat. That's not necessarily what I'm looking for. This is an ideal small water river boat, small lake boat, Lake Athens, Lake Tyler, stuff like that. Uh, now, having said that, Tom's got a place here on Rayburn uh, and he fishes here a lot, but you gotta pick your days, right? I mean, on really, of course, there's days we should none of us be out fishing in, in any boat, but uh, you can't just go out across four footers in a boat, I would say under 20 or 21 feet, but um, it's a it's a roomy boat, so it's it's a setup. And I love the fact, so obviously for crappie fishing, you got three pedestal seats across the front, so you can have three people sitting across the front. And then you got, are the boxes pretty dry, Tom? But I mean, oh, you don't yes, you don't have a problem with getting wet when when it rains. The uh, the one in the back the, where the batteries are. Yeah. We'll take a little water over the transom once in a while. Yeah. So he's got a. Would you describe this as kind of a bed liner style material? It is. Yeah. And the camo pattern, which you guys know, I talked about it when I looked at the G3. I really like kind of the camo pattern on the boats. So you got the one storage box here. Right. And then you got another box. I've not been in these boxes yet, so I'm kind of learning as I go. Got his tray right there, his tool spot. Got a forward live well for the crappie fisherman. And is that a day box under your feet there? This is... Or keep the anchor so there's a spot lock yeah uh so he's running it on a 24 volt well oh excuse me 12 volt 45 pound uh minn kota trolling motor he's got live scope and 360 so he's got it rigged out really nice uh one comment he made that that's difficult having fished the way i fished the last several years is on this boat, there was not a recessed pedal spot. And he said, there's an insert made for some boats, but it won't fit here, excuse me, it won't fit here because of this box, because the insert comes back too deep. So there's really no way to recess that pedal, I guess, unless you really got fancy and wanted to fabricate something yourself. But you can see it's got a wide front deck. Uh, he's got two big units on the dash, which has cut down his walk space a little bit. You probably mount those up higher, but then you're going to lose your gauges. Of course, this boat was made before anybody thought about running two 12-inch units at the dash. But, I mean, it's actually a, a really nice dash setup. It's got crunchable seats. He's got three across seating, which I like. So, one of the things I've not talked much about is... Now, granted, my boys are one and three, but... I know, I, I know, I hope those boys are going to want to fish with me and I want something for them to learn to fish the way I learned to fish in a smaller boat and a metal boat and something that once they're old enough, I'm, I'm comfortable going out with them and me being in the glass boat and them being in the metal boat by themselves, but with, with supervision, if you will. And so this is an ideal kind of boat for me to do that in. And so I really like the idea of the three across seating for crappie fishing, three across again. I like that idea as well. Got the bigger live well in the back back here. You can see he don't use that one because he's got his graph covers in there. And then you got little trays in the back. So, and this is, this is something we've seen kind of standard in metal boats is you just don't have the storage you do in a glass boat but you shouldn't be carrying the weight in a metal boat, you know, smaller boats than you carry in the, in the glass ones. So there's your tank. See, he's only running two batteries, built-in battery, huh? 22 gallon. 22 gallon fuel tank. I would imagine it kind of sips on gas, doesn't it? Yeah. 
he's not running a jack plate. I would think you can get a little bit, sorry guys. There's probably a little bit more speed in one if you put a jack plate on it, but I mean, you're not buying this boat to go fast. You're buying this boat to have a stable, you know, comfortable fishing platform. So it's a big wide front deck. So that's 65 inches right there at the seat pedestal going across. Now, interestingly, based on what we talked about yesterday, uh oh, I caught the edge. I got it, thank you. This one, this boat here is wide across the very front too. I mean, it carries that width. So, you know, based upon what we talked about yesterday, it carries the width and that's more traditional. That's 60 feet. So it's five feet, 60 inches. That's five feet across that front deck where, where you would stand. So it's, well, it's every bit as wide as that bass cat was yesterday. But again, it's a different design. You know, these boats are designed. I know I just gave y'all a really bad view. I'm gonna do that again. So as you guys saw, it's 60 inches all the way up there at the back of the trolling motor pedal. So that boat on the front end is as wide as that boat we fished out of yesterday. But again, it's a different design, right? It's designed to carry that width all the way forward. So fishing with kids, even fishing too. Oh, he's on point. Swing and a miss. Uh, fishing with kids or whatever, it's plenty roomy up there. Now it is, and Tom said something about this. It's pretty tippy. I'll show y'all in a minute on the on the tippy test. It's a pretty tippy boat, but in only ways we think about 1,100 pounds without a motor on it. That's a four, 500, 450 pound motor on the back of it. So of course it's centered. The boat doesn't feel like it has a list at all, just fishing out of it. But it doesn't take much to be tippy. And you know, I talked about this in the glass boat review. There's good and bad with that, right? When a guy sets a hook and you're not ready for it, it'll toss you around a little bit. But if you're fishing in timber, it's really nice by yourself to be able to rock a boat and get it off the, uh, get it off high center. There's not storage under the seats, is there? Yes. Oh, there is. Let's check it out. Oh, look at there. That's pretty cool. So I noticed something. That is cool. So there's seat. So I noticed something when I was sitting down here earlier and I didn't understand why. I'll show you what I noticed. It, the seats were sitting up on rails and I, I was wondering to myself why that is. Well, now that makes sense. So that's basically extra nope. storage. No, sir. What's that? The storage you see stops where the, that gap underneath it will take uh, Plano boxes. Okay. In life jackets. So good point Tom just made. There's you actually can stick life jackets or you know you gotta have a throw cushion and I think all over the US. Of course his is back there. But you know it'll take throw cushions, you can stick plano boxes under there if you got a co-winger with you. He keeps his throw cushion there and you see he keeps his net at the ready right there. The one thing that is a little bit weird about the boat to me is there's not a rod strap here. The rod strap for the co angler is across the back. But I didn't look at the rod box. Get my rod out of the way. So there's your rod box, which obviously, when you live at the lake, you use to just as additional storage. Well, I emptied it for you. Oh, did you? Yeah. So he was carrying more junk before. He just admitted he emptied it for me. But I travel light these days. Sorry, guys. I know I'm giving y'all some bad camera angles this morning. Tool storage. I mean, it's just a simple, clean boat. It's got, coming across the water, it's got what I would call sort of the traditional water sounds you get out of a metal boat, slapping the hull. That doesn't bother me. Now, obviously the Vexus was a lot quieter, but it's a different design front end, and it's also got foam in it. And I don't think these boats were foamed up. Yeah. It is foamed. So All there's, here. okay. That's what covered the tubes that drain the <laughs> so Tom told me earlier that one of the problems he had with the boat early on was they had let the foam kind of get carried away. Yeah. Yeah, they foamed over the tubes that run underneath the floorboard to take water from the front deck underneath to the back to the bilge. So it went back to the factory to have that corrected. So probably the uh, the 18 year old got a little carried away with the foaming and of course that foam goes in and then it expands. So exactly. I'm sure you got to be pretty careful when you spray that foam in there how it does. So it's got some foam in it. 
We've got multiple cleats. There's not a cleat over there. Yeah, there is. So there's your middle cleat if you're in a locking dam. It's got the old crap handle over there. And you could actually hold on down there if you really got in some big stuff out there. Cup holders. Sitting in the driver's seat. You got a really good vision over the top of the boat. It's funny how short these boats feel when you've been in a 20, 21 foot bass boat for a long time. That was the other reason I elevated the seat to be able to see stumps better. Mm -hmm. Oh, so you did this. I did that. Okay, so talk me through what this was when you bought it. Well, the box that you're sitting on that you opened up uh -huh. was sitting on the floor. Oh, so this is a custom job. Yeah. Okay. So I raised it up four inches on aluminum blocks. Then added some cleats. Oh, okay. Now that makes sense because I like how high you sit in this boat. So, so if you're looking at a used Triton boat, you're not going to be sitting as high as we're sitting in this boat which this is really comfortable. Were these the original seats? Oh yeah, they're good seats. I believe a fella could kill a duck out of one of these too if he really wanted to. That was the other reason for camo. Yeah, I hadn't duck hunted in years, but I get it. Got a little bit of gauge blockage, but not too bad. Uh oh, somebody's calling me. <laughs> 